good begin layer 3 mpls mpls vpn what all involves in layer 3 mpls vpn number 1 in order to have a understand these terms that i'm talking in order to have a control plane only for customers network we need a tunnel we need in tunnel is like a uh, like a wire for us a virtual link and then we need a separate controller or the rib routing information base which you can call it as routing table repeating again you already have a control plane on providers network which is being controlled using the default routing table isn't it we already have a routing table which is a control plane of the router and that routing table is pointing towards various directions for various destinations for that control plane we enabled mpls for that control plane which is governing the physical topology we have already enabled mpls and labels are getting distributed we did in the previous lab now we are doing vpn on top of it vpn is a separate topology not the physical topology vpn is the overlay topology a virtual topology isn't it vpn is a virtual topology now this virtual topology needs to be governed by a control plane yes for the virtual topology we need separate routing table or tables it depends on how many customer is going to use the tunnel so in order to create virtual tables routing tables for the virtual uh, topology we need to create vrf we are f vrf only can provide you multiple routing information base already you got one routing information base for the physical topology now we need to have more routing tables for each customer we need one routing table which is created by using this control plane is created by using vrf virtual routing and forwarding now this vrf have got two things one to identify the route that are coming from the customer into this table there is a route distinguisher I'll repeat again to identify the routes that are learned from a particular customer an id is given that is what a route distinguisher if i have two customers how do you know which customer's route is what for that we have route distinguisher the first customer may have one colon one second customer may have two colon two so all the routes coming from customer one will be identified as one colon one all the routes coming from customer 2 will be identified as 2 colon 2. See, that's why the name given route distinguisher. It distinguishes the route of one customer from the other. And this route distinguisher is 32 bit colon 32 bit. That's why I said 1 colon 1. This 32 bit can be a number or can be an IP address. That doesn't matter. You just, it's just an ID. Keep it simple as much as possible. 
or if you want to follow the exact uh, uh, syntax recommended in Cisco, put question mark. You will see it will ask you to type the IP address of the customer and the administered uh, autonomous system number of the customer, which is not mandatory. Any number, that doesn't matter. You need to have a unique number for each customer. That's it. You need to have unique route distinguisher for each customer. So what about this route distinguisher? Are they globally significant or locally significant? They are locally significant. What it means? What does it mean locally significant? Route distinguishers are locally significant. What does this mean? It means that the route distinguisher that you give, for example, on one site for one customer, I have given one column one for one customer in 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 this end, in this provider edge one. On provider edge two, for the same customer, not mandatory to have one colon one. You can also have 11 colon 11 for the same customer. See, here is the customer. Customer A. This is also customer A. Now, whatever this customer A sends, I identify here as 1 colon 1. Whatever this customer sends, this router identifies it as 11 colon 11. Whatever the customer B sends, you identify as 2 colon 2. So, this route distinguisher helps this router to differentiate this learned routes. That's all. It's locally significant. So customer A on either side doesn't need to have same route, route distinguisher because it is locally significant. For those directly connected customers to get identified, you need route distinguisher. If you have the same route distinguisher for that same customer, it is okay, but it is not really going to have any additional impact. So for, for the same customer using same router ID, if you want to have that as a practice, okay, consistency, fine. But that is not a mandatory one. Now, this is customer A. Let's say I give 11 colon 11. And first, for customer B, if I give 1 colon 1, it is okay because they are locally significant. Definitely the, the customer A and customer A and customer B, they are not going to get mixed because of this number. They are not going to get mixed. This is locally significant here. This is locally significant here. So the route distinguisher is locally significant. Why I'm emphasizing on this too much? Because, you know, when you do troubleshooting, there may be trouble somewhere else. But you will think that, oh, the trouble is because the route distinguisher here is 21 colon 12, and for the same customer, it is 1 colon 1. You think that this is the problem. This is the trouble. Yeah. You try to match this thing. It's not. It is waste of time. Don't tell anyone I did this troubleshooting when I did my CCI. Because those days I was not aware that route distinguisher is locally significant. Don't tell anyone, please. All right, route distinguishers are locally significant. Don't troubleshoot there. It's a waste of time. Now, next is route target. Route target is the one which is going to decide who downloads whatever 
I upload. Meaning, customer A is advertising routes. If customer A routes need to be downloaded in this side customer A, <clears throat> the route target should match. For example, here customer A is exporting with a value of triple uh, one colon triple one. This is also 64 bit. Route distinguisher is also 64 bit. Route target is also 64 bit. Now, if I am exporting with the triple one code and triple one, if I need all these routes that are exported with this ID, this ID is globally significant. This is what locally significant. So this customer A routes are having now two IDs. One is route distinguisher, which is locally significant. The other one is the globally significant route target. If this is the export value, then here I need to import for this customer triple one colon triple one. What if accidentally I go to customer B's routing table, customer B's VRF and import what if I do this? Then problem. All the customer A's route will get into the routing table of customer B and now customer B can ping customer A. See the danger. Route distinguisher need to be handled very carefully. Route dis sorry, sorry, route target. Route target needs to be handled very carefully. It is the route target, the one which is going to decide who receives who's update. <clears throat> yep, it is the route target. Route target, import and export value. So, so far what we have seen is, we have seen that we need a control plane that will direct the packet via the tunnel towards the final remote customer sites. For that, to differentiate the customer's route locally, I have route distinguisher. To decide which update need to get pushed to the remote site, route target is used. Route target is import and export value. The export of of the sender needs to be matched in the input of the receiver. Only then he can receive the updates. <clears throat> so we need to properly use in the right place the import value for those exports. Now, this is the main story of layer three VPN. Layer 3 MPLS VPN needs a control plane. The, the VPN will be negotiated using BGP. And then this VRF routes will be placed inside the BGP provided tunnel with each customer's route along with the route distinguisher and route target values. So, we have control plane on either end. We have a tunnel provided by BGP. The physical topology may be like this, cranky. But the virtual topology is just one hop. This is provided by BGP. And for each customer, a routing table is provided with the help of VRF, we create it. And then we take these routes, we put it inside the tunnel. 
we take this root and put it inside the tunnel. They are differentiated because they have different route target, route distinction. They are differentiated because they have different distinction. This is what I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm here putting it as in color, red color, purple color, route distinction. But inside the tunnel, they go with a route target value. That purple and red is not having any impact. In fact, this purple route distinguisher is a red color. May not be red color here because I said route distinguisher can be different. Hmm. So let me make this story a little bit different. This is customer A. This is customer B. And this is customer A in the remote site. See different route distinguisher. Color is different, not the same red. And this is customer B on the remote site. So when your red color goes, it will not know where to put this root. When your purple goes, you will not know where to put the purple routes on the remote site to which we are if you will not know. Because the route distinguisher is not used to identify. It is only locally significant to differentiate route on that router where the customer is attached. So now, what determines? Hmm. So meaning uh, the packets will not carry uh, route distribution tags. It will have, but it won't be used in figuring out where to deliver. Okay. It will have. All right, so now you will have both route distinguisher and route target when you type show a BGP VPN V4 command, you will definitely see this is coming from this particular route distinguisher. But that is not the one which is the which is determining who gets these routes downloaded. Because you see the either side, the route distinguisher color is different. One side it is black, the other side is red, the one side it is green, the other side it is purple. It is locally significant. To make it uh, clear, I have made different colors. So colors, this route distinguisher is what I mean as color here. This color is not determining who gets what. What determines is when I send, I also send with another color called route target. This is what need to match here. Now, that red is coming, that, that, that uh, big red dot, the dark red route distinguish, sorry, route target. Route target value is also coming. And this route target is attracted by this route target. Boom. So it gets downloaded. Likewise, I have this blue value attached and the blue is here and blue blue attracts gets downloaded so route target is also attached when the route target of the receiver matches with the route target which is coming in the route updates via VPN they get downloaded there. And now customer A B knows about the remote customer B's root and they can ping each other. Customer A also knows the remote customer A and they can ping each other. So it is route target, route distinguisher, the VRF, one which provides the control plane for the overlay network. Overlay is nothing but VPN, layer 3 VPN, we are here calling it as overlay tunnel because the physical topology 
I mean, that would be a, a serial pipe. It may be full mesh or it may be hub and spoke. That doesn't matter for us. All that we need is one tunnel, one straight connection to appear in between this provider edge in the left, this provider edge in the right. We need just one straight connection and one hop. We call this as layer 3 VPN. Now, coming to the story. These control planes also need MPLS. These control planes also need MPLS. You are not going to enable it separately. Whatever you have enabled already is enough. Before MPLS, sorry, before VPN, the MPLS that you enabled, you remember on the LAN interface, that is enough. Now, for each customer's route, there will be a label assigned and advertised through the tunnel. This is what going to be called, called as service label. And these labels that are coming from each physical hub, they are called as transport label. So if someone is using, if customer A is pinging, is a remote customer, a remote site A, customer A site, till it hits this control plane, there is no MPLS. When it hits this control plane, he receives the VPN label, which is given by this PE2 for this network. So that label, let's say 40. Now to go to that remote PE1, there will be another label given by this hop. That label, let's say 23. So bottom of a stack will be one for this, bottom of a stack will be zero for this. And now as the packet leaves this physical interface, it goes with 23. This will change the label given by this. It switches from here to here to here to here. That's how it reaches the tunnel end. As soon as it reaches the tunnel end, this upper layer is going to be removed. No, no, no. The upper label layer will be removed in PHP right here itself. So when the remote PE receives the packet, it will only see 40. It knows what does that 40 means. 40 is given by this control plane to CA customer. So it delivers the packet out here. So you will see stack. You will see label stack. When you capture a packet somewhere here, if I capture the traffic, I'll see two layers of MPLS. One with the bottom of a stack zero, which is for the local switching. Or the physical network. The other one is the bottom of a stack on, which is the service label to identify the remote tunnel end prefix control plane. And by the label, it knows what control plane it has to enter. It will enter into the VRF of customer A in the remote site and then go out. You know, this is the working logic of MPLS layer 3 VPN. I have explained to you layer 3 MPLS VPN working. What is next? Next is we have to do this lab. So today we will build this topology. Tomorrow we'll do this lab. First let's build the topology.